Back in 2017, Apple unveiled a multi-device wireless charger that we did not get a price for and we didn't get an official release date for. And it seems like they did not learn their lesson because in 2020, they're doing the same thing again with MagSafe Duo. We don't know how much it costs and we don't know when it's coming out. But I think if you guys wanted any type of confirmation from Apple that air power is not coming out, aside from the newsroom post that said air power is not coming out, coming out, uh, this should be pretty good evidence of that, and I'm for it. Let's begin. So yeah, obviously, air power did not work out, and it is not something Apple typically does. It's very rare that they would unveil something and make as bold a claim as Phil did by saying that no one else in the industry knows how to do this, but our engineering team, we can make this work, and then later say, actually, uh, we couldn't figure it out, and because of that, we're not going to release this product at all. And because of the landscape of wireless charging and simple physics that Apple has to deal with, I kind of get it. And the more I thought about air power, the more I realized how impractical it was, especially with Apple pushing so many loop bands these days, you know, watch bands that just kind of stretch out and don't unhook that easily. Those types of watch bands would not be pleasant and they would not be easy on a device like air power. And for the record, the trick with air power was really not about just making a mat that you could charge your device at any location on because as we've seen from third parties you can do that even with two devices simultaneously though it is a very complex and expensive manufacturing process to overlay a bunch of chi coils on top of each other just so that you can have a little bit more wiggle room on where you drop your phone which is ultimately why I think air power was over engineered too expensive too complicated and it makes sense why Apple ended up canceling it because when chi charging was first coming to the iPhone Apple probably looked at it as well in the future everything's gonna be inductively charged and this is just the start and in the future we'll make even bigger charge mats and eventually you know we'll have air power pro max that will take up a whole desk and you'll be able to drop your laptop on it and just have it charge as cool as that does sound and that's where I thought maybe the future was headed with wireless charging the physics and complications in engineering something that intricate with that many coils and getting it to not overheat and not get too hot it's way more complicated and expensive than we thought it was going to be. But it's good that Apple wanted to bring something unique to wireless charging, though ultimately the main reason air power didn't work out is because of the Apple Watch. It's so tiny, it's so compact, and there's so many health sensors on the back that still, after so many generations of the Apple Watch being out, it can't support Qi charging. And there are other smartwatches that do support Qi, but obviously they don't sell as well as the Apple Watch, and they're likely engineered very differently from the internal level. In the future, I would love it if the Apple Watch could get Qi charging, but the fact that it doesn't means that even if Apple did somehow develop or use the same technology that some of those old third-party chargers are using that allow you to charge your phone at, you know, a variety of locations, even then, it wouldn't allow air power to exist because they wanted you to be able to charge three devices, AirPods, iPhone and the Apple Watch all at the same time and that clearly just isn't possible because of how specialized the charging method is on the Apple Watch. But Apple has seen great success with the Apple Watch charging mechanism so they basically decided let's blow that up and bring it to the iPhone. MagSafe Duo, in my opinion, is a much better approach to making a multi-device inductive charger because for one, the charge puck is adjustable. So if you want to lay it flat, you can, or if you want it in nightstand mode, you can flip it up while at the same time be able to charge your iPhone on the side. Also, this is kind of Apple's first foldable, right? Because it folds up and you can take it with you. I know it doesn't count. I'm just trying to troll everyone, but still the elegance and simplicity of it, not to mention it looks way, way smaller than air power would. And you know, I think kind of the main appeal to air power was people who are going on trips and only wanted to carry around one charger for everything. But frankly, I've had an air power clone for a long time. It doesn't work very well. And if you had to take this with you on all your trips and wind up a cable or make room for this giant charge mat in your bag, in your briefcase, it would be a little bit cumbersome compared to MagSafe Duo, which folds up and looks like it could even just fit in your back pocket, which is really convenient, and charge your devices. No, it can't do AirPods in your iPhone at the same time, but I think most people realize that AirPods are not necessarily something you need to charge up every single day. So when you need to charge them up, you know, you can drop them on the MagSafe portion of the charger, and when you need to charge your phone, you can drop that on MagSafe. And we also actually have official charge speeds that have been promised with MagSafe Duo of 15 watts, which 
I think is a great middle ground because I know that there's other wireless chargers and there's other fast charging companies out there that like to shoot things past 30 watts, 50 watts, or 60 watts these days. And that rapid charging speed really does impact battery health. So I think 15 watts is like a good middle ground of it charges fast, while at the same time doesn't damage battery health that significantly so I'm glad Apple chose something in the middle like that and the MagSafe convenience brought to the iPhone 12 and the MagSafe charger that they're going to be selling just tomorrow so get your wallets ready these fix the same problem air power was looking to fix in a much more elegant and much more practical way what was the problem right air power was trying to fix they were trying to allow you to charge multiple devices and not have to worry about aligning your phone properly so MagSafe alone by adding hardware to the phone and of course releasing new hardware they're able to now fix this problem except now it's only 40 bucks instead of however much air power would have costed best case scenario probably 250 dollars i would say knowing it's apple it likely would have ended up costing 300 dollars or more and the other great help with this magsafe thing is it allows you to inductively charge your device while still using it at the same time so in a way it's not really a wireless charger that magsafe puck that they're going to start selling but similar to the apple Apple Watch, it allows something to magnetically attach to the back and you still have a wire so you can continue to use the device in bed when you want to. And I'll talk about it more in future videos, but I do think this points to the idea that Apple is eyeing that lightning port and looking to get rid of it as soon as they can. And I know some of you aren't for it. And for the record, I'm not really for it either, but I will admit that if you are looking to remove the charge port next year, then adding MagSafe to the back and maybe even starting to include that MagSafe cable within in the packaging of iPhones in the future could ease the transition for a lot of people knowing that well what if I want to charge my phone as I'm using it at night you still can with MagSafe on the back if anything you should actually be able to adjust it so you can have the cable coming out from the side or the bottom and of course for traditional accessories whether it be those Belkin car mounts which look really cool because now you don't have to add magnets into your phone case anymore you're just caseless basic iPhone 12 can snap onto your car mount and start charging or whenever you want to charge your phone at the end of the day, you don't have to worry about aligning it just right. So frankly, given all the work and all the simplicities they've brought with MagSafe Duo and the MagSafe Edition on the iPhone 12, there's no reason for air power to exist anymore. Like, even if there are internal teams that are trying to get it work, even if there are prototypes internally that they're messing around with, it doesn't make any sense for them to sell a $300 three-in-one accessory that doesn't even let you put the Apple Watch into nightstand mode. You have to lay it flat which is not watch band friendly whereas MagSafe Duo you can use with any watch band no problem and also I don't know exactly how much MagSafe Duo costs and I hope this actually comes out and it doesn't get delayed and then canceled but frankly the tech in it is much more proven we know it exists given that Apple is selling these MagSafe accessories as soon as tomorrow and building that just into the same Apple Watch charging dock they already sell the tech there is way more simple and for that reason I imagine it will be much more affordable than anything Air power could have done and they're even advertising directly in keynotes now if you do want a three-in-one charger there's things like that belkin magsafe edition which allows you to charge your phone watch and airpods all with one accessory just for 150 bucks why then would apple come out with a non-magsafe supported charger that allows you to charge three devices at the same time but is less apple watch friendly and twice the price i don't see it coming out because i know a lot of people out there still thought air power was in the works or air power was going to make a comeback even after apple said hey we couldn't make it work it's not coming out and given apple is not going to cancel it a second time they're not going to make a second newsroom post hey guys it's really dead this time in my opinion this is the final nail in the coffin magsafe coming out and the magsafe duo and apple promoting these three-in-one chargers this is them admitting air power was too complicated too expensive and we found a much smarter and a much better solution i may add because if apple wanted to remove the charge port and their solution was well everyone can just buy air power instead uh yeah that would not have gone well i don't think that would have worked and you definitely wouldn't have the added benefit of being able to inductively charge your phone as you're still using it at the same time so i'm very excited for magsafe it's actually my favorite a feature added to the iphone 12 this year just because of how simple and how easy wireless charging can become now and i can't wait to see all the third-party accessories i love the little wallet attachment on the back 
back. Just the idea of, you know, when you leave the house, slapping that thing on the back, and then when you want to charge your phone, just pull it off. You know, it's great. It's kind of like what I've been saying about the 2018 iPad Pro features coming to more products, and that's one of the things I loved about my iPad Pro is that magnetically, it can just dock and attach to all the accessories it needs. And that's what they brought to the iPhone, which is great. So what do you guys think? Are there still some of you out there that are going to hold out hope for air power, or will you tap into the logical side of your brain and realize it makes no sense for Apple to release that as MagSafe is now going to become the new standard? Feel free to let me know. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.